Now that we understand Final Cut Pro X's working environment, it's time to start working within the program. In this section, we'll cover how to import files from transcoding to creating proxies. The focus of this lesson is to know how to use the media import window, what choices need to be made, and what the ramifications are. Importing media into Final Cut Pro 10 is really simple. And there's actually four different ways to get to the media import window. So let me show you those four different ways. First, we can go up to File, Import, Media, and it'll bring up the window. I can use the keyboard shortcut, Command-I, and it'll bring up the window. I can click on this Import Media button, and it'll bring up the window. And then there's another button that's just over here, which is what it collapses into, which is the Import Media button as well, which is this down arrow. So if I click on that, it brings up the window. Very, very cool. Whenever I click on those or bring up the media window, it will want to import that media into whatever event you have highlighted. So right now I have the event importing files highlighted. So if I click on import media and brings it up, it's actually going to default to bringing in those files into my importing files event. I can create a new event or I could choose a different event if I had one listed. As well, we have all these different options on the right side of the screen. So let me first bring up a clip so you can see how the media import window works with clips chosen. I have this clip here and it's real exciting shot. It's a pan from a window to a pot upside down, a flower pot and Real exciting, but it's gonna show you some movement. So if I just scrub here, I can scrub over all of this and it'll show me the clip. And I can go forward and backwards and do whatever in, in any speed you want. And you can go through and say you have the same clip over and over and over again and you just wanna bring in just the best take. This would be a best way to do that. As well, you can play the file from beginning to end by just pressing play and not having to scrub it. And this is in real time. Now that I've shown you that, I'm working with some footage that is Apple ProRes 444. Now these files can be quite hefty. In fact, some of them are 35 to about 50 seconds and they range from like two gigs all the way up to about seven gigs. Very big files. So because of that, we probably will want to optimize the media or if I want to keep the original color space, I can create proxy media so I can go back to that original file. So let's get to all the options on the media import window. It's really quite simple. And what it's gonna do is save you from having to use some other program to transcode and change all your files. It can do that all for you. And it actually can do it running in the background so you can work with the original files while you edit. And when it finally optimizes, either creating the optimized media or creating the proxy media, it'll replace it. And you will not really notice at all other than your computer is running in the background while it's doing this. So you might have some resources taken by that. In fact, you will, but how much it affects you, well, it depends on what your computer has in it and its ability to do those things. But those are also the reasons why you might create optimized media and proxy media to begin with because you just don't have the resources within your computer to handle those large files. What you might wanna do is create optimized or proxy media. Now, when doing that, creating optimized media creates a Apple ProRes 422 file, which is the optimized file format for Final Cut Pro 10, or you can create proxy media, which is Apple ProRes 422 proxy file. If you want to create both, you can have them both checked. If you want to have one, you can have one checked. And really the goal there is whatever you're trying to achieve. If you are okay with just transcoding it to 422, then you can have that. You can uncheck uh, the proxy button there and you can just work on a one path there and just stay with that and not have to go back to the original file. Or if you want to go back to the original, you can uncheck this and create proxy media. And at the end, relink to the original file and you can export from your original native footage. I skipped over a little bit, which is what is happening to your files. So we have two options. You can either copy to the library or leave files in place. Now the big difference between these is copy to the library is actually going to make a new copy of your file and put it within your library. So if you are doing some kind of collaborative work or you need really simple archiving or what have you so that everything is nice and contained in one place, copy them to the library. If you have an issue of hard drive space or you don't need to be neat in that way, you can leave files in place. Because really, if you're copying to a library, you're actually making now two copies of that original file. And what that's going to do is fill up your hard drive. So if you have limited resources, as far as that goes, you might want to choose leave files in place. And all that's going to do is go, hey, Final Cut Pro, these files live over here and it's just going to link to those and it's going to be accessing those from their original location instead of going and finding their own new file that was created just for the sake of organization and keeping everything together. 
So for us, we're going to copy to library and we're going to create proxy media because I like that this is ProRes 444. I want to keep that color space in mind. So when I get to the end, I want to relink with my original native footage. And so I'm going to choose those. Now, the cool thing is, is I get to the keyword section and it actually will import metadata from finder tags, from folders. So it'll keep the folder structure and information there. So if you organize all your footage by take, by camera, by shot type or scene or whatever way you're organizing them, it'll actually bring those folders in in that organization and keep those for you. As well, it will find people. So it'll tell you a one shot, a two shot, medium shot, a wide shot. It will organize those things for you and it'll consolidate to find people in your results. And then lastly, it actually will create smart collections and analyze your shot. So it will organize it for you without you having to. It probably won't be exactly perfect uh, depending on the type of work you're doing. It might be exactly perfect if you're doing just those types of shots, but either way, it's gonna save you time because it's going to organize it for you. And you can just go and spend a little bit of time and reorganize it to whatever workflow that works best for you. Next, we're going to video. And on the video tab there, if we go down to it, if you have a pull down on your video, it can remove the pull down. If you want it to analyze for color balance, you can do that so that it has information so it already analyzes it. so if you want to auto correct the color it will do that for you and it might be depending on your workflow what you need to do if you don't have a whole lot of time for color grading or if you just are okay with its auto correct then you can just go ahead and choose that and it does it really simply for you or you can have it not at all and you have all the control you'd like next you can go to audio and you can analyze and have it fix audio problems it can separate mono and group stereo audio and then it can also remove silent channels so depending on your workflow what you're doing with the video or what you're doing with the audio it can do all those things for you. And then you have the choice to close the window after starting import, which is going to be nice. And it's going to do the processes in the background. And I'll show you that in a second. So what I'm going to do is these are all shots that I did for the purpose of showing you how to create proxy media, copying to the library. And if I go to import selected, and click on it, it's now working on transcoding into proxies for me of those original files. Now, these files that are here accessible to me right now, those are the original files. But if I go right here, it's actually showing me the percentage of the work that's happening in background tasks. And if I click on it, it will show me what it's actually doing. And I can show the process of what it's doing for all these. So it's this is copying the files and this is the transcoding section. So it'll actually show me the percentage of happening with those and it'll keep working until it gets to 100%. When it gets to 100%, it's actually automatically going to change what these videos that are up here are linked to those new copied and transcoded files. You can start working on it immediately if your computer has the resources to keep up with it, and it will automatically replace those when it's ready. So that's very, very cool, and you can just start editing right off the bat. So that is the media import window. Up next, we're gonna be covering file management and organization in Final Cut Pro 10.